Hello, I'm Bob Harris. In the past, texturing and stamping uh, stair risers and treads has always proven to be a challenge. Uh, with modern day advances, there are companies now that actually produce what's called step liners, or sometimes referred to as form liners. Um, it really gives the craftsman the ability now to create some very nice textures on the faces of the uh, stair risers. Now traditionally what we used to do before the, uh, before the evolution of this type of a product is we would literally strip the, the face of the stair riser and use a seamless texture skin and try to create texture. Now it's a real simple process. You simply attach these uh, step liners or step, step forms right to the timber as you see here. It's pretty cool because it comes in a variety of different sizes. Here is six inches wide, so it really retrofits nicely onto a standard two by six. Uh, a couple ways that you can attach it, you can actually use uh, finished nails, or I like to use what's called a brad nail gun. It's real quick, you just shoot brad nails in and you're ready to go. Also, it comes down into a four inch for using a traditional two by four, and uh, you bet you can even use these little guys, a two inch, that are great for countertops. So this is really nice uh, to use for this type of an application. When it comes to coloring, uh, I'm a big fan of using an integral color for coloring, knowing that it, the uh, whole body of the concrete is in fact colored, so that when we strip this off, the whole stair riser and the treads have an integral color. Uh, you can come back after the fact and you can use uh, stains as an accent, whether it's an acid stain or a water-based stain. So there's plenty of versatility when using these step liners. Let's show you how they work. It's literally that quick and simple. Now we're gonna have a beautiful architectural finish when these uh, stair, stair risers are uh, stripped. One other consideration to take into account, it's not a bad idea to 45 degree the front edge of this two by six so that when we're floating, floating the stair treads, we can get our uh, hand floats and our trowels right up tight. Now, I will have to strip this off during the pour where the bottom stair uh, riser can be left until the next day. There's no reason to strip this off. However, we need to strip this top one off simply because we need to finish up underneath this and texture so we don't see that little bit of a gap left behind underneath the form. We've poured our stair risers and treads using the step liners, uh, the step forms, and now what's really crucial is that you come back and you actually vibrate the edges of this. What you, what you don't want is that when you remove this, you don't want to see a lot of honeycombs and voids. So the goal is to bring the cement paste, or the fines as we refer to it as, right to the surface. So there are a couple of ways, a lot of small little baby taps, and if you look what happens here, you can see it really brings the paste to the surface. So this is, this is really ultra critical to make sure that we reduce or minimize the chance for uh, bug holes or honeycombs. So you notice the paste that's coming here. Now another good way that we'll do this uh, is we'll use just a palm sander. We use this a lot on concrete countertops to really vibrate, but I want you to watch what happens to the edge of this when we use something like this. So regardless, if you use a palm sander or tap it, don't skip this very in step, or important step because this is uh, really the key to getting an, a nice textured edge when the forms are removed. Back over here on our step liner, I like to uh, go ahead and remove this. Again, what we need to do is we need to float underneath the stair riser. Because of the width of this, there's going to be a little indentation or a void. Now on our bottom uh, stair riser, there's really no need to strip it uh, because this is going to either receive landscaping or your sidewalk. But over here, what we like to try to do is break the bond. You don't want to just pull it real quick because you could actually pull a chunk off. So what we do is just kind of slowly go through, pull back gently, and then break the bond. And then uh, we're going to come back over here and uh, go ahead and remove it. 
and we've got that beautiful stone-like rock edge that looks really, really nice. And we did, a, we did a, a, a decent job of vibrating it. We have just a few minor little voids here, okay, but nothing that's uh, unacceptable. But here's the area that I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hand float. So what we can do is get in here and uh, address this right here. And from here, you could either leave, leave it slicked out or you could actually uh, texture it too to make it look like rock. So now that we've floated out our little depressed area from the uh, step liner, I like to use a little duckbill trowel, come in here and really finish this area off nice. 